want so you to get to do well. Easy, we want France to do well. We're cheering for the United States okay, and so France because when we France. get to the knockout round, yeah. we give them an uppercut. Uh, I'm, Don't I'm listen. Rooting, we're rooting for Korea. Korea. We're rooting for Korea. Korea. Mm. Okay. We're rooting for Korea. Time for us to go viral. Steph Curry had one of the best performances of his career in Game 3. However, this is his first finals appearance without LeBron. He was asked about that on a Jimmy Kimmel Live segment. Take a listen. You know, you're back, I'm back. Guess who's not back? Who's not back? LeBron. LeBron James. LeBron's not back? So I want you to sign this card for me. I wish you were here. So I, so I want you to... So can you sign it a card for me? I give it to him. Yeah. You gonna give it to him? Yeah, yeah. We're best friends. I'm gonna sign it for him to say... Save me a cigar later. All right. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you. Good luck, man. Do you miss the guy? Uh, me? Uh -huh. No. You need a bigger car. You only got. I don't think everyone's gonna fit in here. No, they will. This car's as small as you. What do you think he's doing right now? I think uh, I saw him on the internet. I think it was Taco Tuesday the other day or something. I don't know. Taco Tuesday? <laughs> yeah. I love tacos. Uh, me too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not just Taco Tuesday, but Taco Tuesday. That is what LeBron did on his Instagram. Now, he got a little criticized for that, probably fairly. And, but Jenna was now, thanks letting for people know. That yeah, there, no I was being LeBron. You were being LeBron. That's why I mentioned That's that, of course. Okay. Now, it should be mentioned, our friend, Cousin Sal, from Locked In on FS1, yeah. he's a big part of Jimmy Kimmel Live, some of the brain trust behind Jimmy Kimmel Live. That's a really good show, and that guy does a great job. Funny. That's good. Good stuff. That's good. I don't think um, they miss LeBron in the finals. Though. I yeah. think they're very happy he's not there. Time for your AT&T Wake Up Call. Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz will be in Philadelphia for a while. The team showed their faith in the oft-injured Wentz, signing him to a four-year $128 million extension with nearly $108 million guaranteed. CC, you surprised with all that guaranteed money, given Wentz's injury history? Not surprised at the amount of money, surprised at the timing. I thought they might wait a little bit. He's still got two years left. But Howie Roseman, one of the better front offices that we see in the NFL, always trying to win. And they get a little cap relief if they can take a couple of those years, move them up to begin that contract next. And so that's one of the reasons you do it early. You can spread this money over six years instead of waiting another year and spread it over just five. Mm -hmm. If during this contract, Carson Wentz plays 86 of the 96 regular season games you could over a six-year stretch. The Eagles will be thrilled, and he will be well worth the money. Okay. If he suffers like another it. injury that knocks him out for the crit most critical part of the season, that's, to me, the only way this contract blows up in their face if he can't get over the injury bug that's bitten him now four straight seasons in some capacity. All right, let's move on to the NBA now. Kyrie Irving is reportedly serious about joining the Brooklyn Nets this summer. And after trading away Alan Crabb yesterday, Brooklyn can now create two max salary spots. Nick, we think Kyrie ends up in Brooklyn? All signs are pointing to it now. Yes. Ky the, the, before this, the NBA rumor mill said Kyrie was leaning towards Brooklyn. Now Brooklyn, who finally was out of the pick hell of not having their own draft picks from that Boston trade. They, once again, they finally got their draft picks back. No, we'll trade them away because they want to go for it right now. Believing they can get Kyrie, maybe believing they can get someone to come with Kyrie, and if not, keep D'Angelo Russell with Kyrie. The Nets clearly think they've got Kyrie Irving all but locked up. Yeah, there's a number of rumors going around about NBA free agents. This is one that you should believe. There's a lot of meat to this story. And not only is Kyrie more likely to sign with Brooklyn, you can believe behind the scenes, the word is Kyrie is trying to talk Kevin Durant, leaving Golden State and coming to Brooklyn with that second max so contract. So we could deal. have, so Kyrie's trying to get the KD Kyrie combo that we've been talking about all year in New York City. Yes. Just but not. But in Brooklyn. Not right. Just in a different borough of New York yeah. City. I don't believe KD's going to go for that. He wants to be in the big city of New York. CC, we're going to Brooklyn. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that, that too. Yeah, yeah. To tonight's game now, Clay Thompson will be in the lineup after missing game three with a balls. hamstring injury. I keep falling into that trap. Same one. Warriors trying to even the series at two games apiece. See, what do you expect from Clay tonight? I don't expect him to be at 100%. I expect him to be hampered on the offensive end, especially on the defensive end. I want to see him. I want to see him burst down the court. I want to see also what is the strategy for Toronto. Do they play right up in his hip pocket on his right side and run him off the three-point line to put pressure on that hamstring? And I want to see if he can build an elevate on his jump shot. 
If he can't get elevation on his jump shot, I believe it will affect him. I don't believe he's going to be able to play the typical 36 to 40 minutes that Clay's going to play. 23 points, three rebounds, two assists on right around 50% shooting. I think offensively, we're going to have a pretty typical Clay Thompson game. I think they will find a way to scheme him open. How much of an impact can he have defensively? And is he so hampered by that hamstring that he becomes a defensive liability to where he can't play 30 plus minutes? If that's the case, Warriors being a similar position they were in game three, which is very tough for them to find a way to win. I don't think that'll be the case. I think Clay will be a big part of a big Warriors win tonight. And look for them to try to get him started quick, like they yes. did in game number two. All right, well, while Clay is back, Kevin Durant, who missed the last eight games, will not play in game four. Steve Kerr said there's a good chance, though, he might play in game five or even game six. Clay Thompson spoke on what it would mean if Kate were, KD were to miss the finals entirely. Well, it would suck if Kevin can't come back. I mean, I still think we'd have a good chance to win the finals, but obviously that takes a huge hit. Um, I don't think it would make us the clear-cut favor anymore without him. You know, this team's very good. So, Nick, who is the favorite in the series if KD doesn't return at well, all? I picked the Warriors assuming KD wasn't going to play, so I'm not going to change all? my... Yeah, I said that I thought the Warriors could win even if KD never steps on the court. And by the way, people need to start recognizing the very real possibility KD never steps on the court. They're now talking about Game 5. You know why they're talking about Game 5? Because it's the closest game he hasn't been officially ruled out for. Just like they were talking about Game 4 and Game 3. And they, they keep pushing the goalpost just one yard out. And then when they get there, they push it another yard out. Steve Kerr said before Game 3, he's going to scrimmage tomorrow. He then yesterday, which was tomorrow, kind of a little time travel, had to come back and say, I, I misspoke, I apologies, we didn't do a full scrimmage. Now they're going to have a weekend where one day they practice, one day they take a cross-country flight, or they or an international flight, but cross-country. Katie's going to play in Game 5? I don't think he is. Now, do I think the Warriors can win without him? I do. I think they've demonstrated that throughout these NBA playoffs, that they can win without one of their three super-duper stars, but not without two of their super-duper stars. But the other element that I find interesting, see, is something we talked about earlier, which is you mentioned the people close to KD. You wonder if some of them are telling him to take it easy. And Draymond had a very interesting quote that I, I don't want to read too much into, but the quote was, Kevin Durant at 75% is better than a lot of people. And I, that, to me, that quote's saying, man, Draymond wondering, if you are 75%, you Let's could go. help. And so nobody knows what Katie's calf is feeling, and I think Katie desperately wants to get out there. The work, he doesn't want them to lose, and he doesn't want them to win without him. So he wants to get out there, but he has a lot of things pushing and pulling on him that aren't just fibers in his calf. Yeah, the number one thing that's pulling on him is his body. The reason why they ruled him out of game number four is because he's not capable of playing an NBA basketball game, let alone even try to get on the court and participate in three-on-three. -three. The injury is a lot worse than they ever anticipated, and part of the reasoning is KD's going to try to come back, and the greatest athletes, they're in the greatest shape, they have the fastest recovery. But the reality is, it's been over four weeks now since he strained that calf, and you can listen to Clay in his soundbite. You know what he said? Well, what if KD doesn't come back? He immediately, his whole disposition changed. Wow, that wouldn't be good. Like, I don't think we would be the favorite. Steve Kerr and the organization, they might realize that this team might be let down if we announce that KD's out. Like, he'll never come back. So let's just keep trying to extend this. Oh, man, he's going to go on the road with us. Remember game number one and two? Yeah. You're like, Chris, does that mean he's closer or further away? I said, that's got to mean he's closer. He's traveling with the team. He's with the training staff. He's continuing to get treatment. They're giving us these little shots of him on the court in footies not in his regular KD basketball shoes. Like, he's a long ways from playing. I wouldn't be surprised if, if we didn't see him, did not see him in game number five. So who do you think has the edge if he doesn't return? Toronto has the edge. That's the, that's the reason why we picked him. We didn't think KD was gonna be back. We've played 12 quarters of basketball. They have outscored Golden State in 10 of those. Only ones they didn't, game one, game two, and quarter number three. They have outplayed the Warriors, and KD is not even practicing. Clay missed some time out with an injury. Now he's trying to come back. Yes, they're healthier. They have the home court advantage. Like, they have proven this throughout the season. 
And it's hard for me to believe that this could be true, but I must acknowledge it could be true. I could end up being wrong that the Warriors are going to win tonight. You could end up being right that the Raptors are going to win tonight. And if that's the case, the Warriors are facing elimination in game five. And that's the earliest you could see Kevin Durant, and he wouldn't be 100%. The next time Kevin Durant takes the court, the, the, there's a better than 50% chance the Warriors season's on the line. If it's game six, they would have to win both of these games right. in order for it not to be. If it's game seven, obviously. So those are the circumstances in which Kevin Durant, if he returns, will be, be returning under, yep. in the biggest game of the season for Golden State. And that's State. why earlier you talked about the circumstances for which Golden State and which they face. Imagine Toronto tonight, Nick Nurse saying, you know something, guys? I don't know if KD going to play. But we win tonight's game, we're going to force him on the court. Yeah. Because if they lose tonight, KD, it's, all, it's one game, all or nothing. And I believe he would try to play in that. Golden State wins tonight. It gives him a little At more time. At least another game where their season's not on the line. Yes. Right. All right, let's move on to the controversy from